starting a brand new series today called the Foundations Series. And, uh, and so Paul, uh, in, in, in the Bible, uh, he, he planted a church in Corinth, Greece. Sometimes I think we read this Bible and it just, it's hard for us to correlate the Bible with us. And, and we kind of forget that these people are normal people. These people uh, had concerns and, and, uh, and they were sharing the gospel. They were planting 1 p.m. services, so to speak, even back then. And so he, Paul planted a church in Corinth because Corinth, Greece was a port city. It, was a, it, it had a lot to do with the economic of that region and in that era and that season. And so uh, in planting churches, uh, people come. And when people come, there's situations and circumstances and problems and challenges. And wherever you get people together, we're all kind of, you know, human and flawed and, uh, and goofy things happen when you get all kinds of people together. And in fact, I always tell my friends and people, I say, if the Bible was still being written today, it would be First and Second Corinthians, First and Second Infinite. You know, I mean, we, I, I think we could make the Bible, you know, and, and uh, now obviously it's not being written and we're not rewriting it. And, uh, but uh, I, I do think that what goes on here, we're learning, we're growing, and we've got our challenges, and we've got people from all different denominations and backgrounds, and some people that's never been in church in your life, and, and you know, we say Abraham, and you're trying to figure out who in the world's Abraham, you know? And so, you know, we're, we're all growing, we're learning, we're developing, and, and so we're gonna start with 1 Corinthians, which is a letter that Paul wrote to this church plant because they were having some problems and challenges, and, and so Paul... Uh, writes a letter. They didn't have emails and television and, and cell phones, and, and so they would communicate by writing a letter. And if you really want to know, they called them epistles, which is not the apostles' wives, but they were letters, all right? Just trying to help you, trying to further your Bible education today. Uh, so 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, if you have your Bibles, you can open up, or we have the scripture that will be on the screen. Today, we're going to use the King James Version uh, as I read this scripture. And so Paul is writing to this church plant, dealing with the foundations. Today, I'm, I'm kind of gunning for two areas over the next several weeks, actually. One is, we're talking about the foundation of this church and how we are raising up this church to be a, a, a church that makes a difference in our area and globally. But I also want you to you know, kind of take this personally and, and that we're, we're writing to you about your own personal foundation. Individually, if you're single, and if you're married, then I want you to kind of translate this message today into your own family, your marriage, your children. We're talking about the, the power and, and the strength of a foundation in your life and in this church's life. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, Paul writes, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me, uh, he said, as a wise master builder, or today we say as a wise church planner, I have laid a foundation. Everybody say foundation. foundation. Okay, thank you for six of you. Everybody say foundation. We're doing this together, folks. Are you ready? And so he said, as a wise master builder, I have laid a foundation, and another buildeth upon. Meaning there's, there's coming more people, and it's not just going to be me. We've got other people that are going to help strengthen this church at Corinth. And, and so he said, but let every man take heed how he buildeth Thereupon, meaning I want you to like pay attention. I want you to focus. I want you to understand. I want you to watch uh, how we're going to build this and the strength of it. So, uh, ten years ago, we moved into this area. We lived we uh, we lived for about fifteen years in in the Lancaster Canal Winchester area and raised our children there. We have four children. We raised it, we built a home down there and. Um, and then we moved up to this area because we wanted to be close to, obviously, planting this church. This church is nine and a half years old. And so we bought a home. It was a spec home, and uh, it, meaning it, it was just almost finished. It was 30 days from being finished. And so we, we went in the home, and Carol loved the home, and she was excited about the home, and I was excited that she was excited. So we, we uh, moved in the home, and it wasn't long 
until we realized that there was a beam. We have this like an open floor plan. It's got a loft. You go up the stairs, and there's a few bedrooms upstairs, and, and there's this one beam, and it was kind of buckling. And the drywall was bowing, and, and I'm like, you know, and I asked them about it, and they had some goofy explanation of why it bowed, you know, and and so the builders, and so then there was a there was a part where the the refrigerator was. There's a wall right there. You come downstairs. There's a wall right there. The fridge, the refrigerator is there, and it started to like a little hole. They're like a little sinking hole by the you know thing, and on the other side of that wall is my grand piano, which is my baby. And, you know, so, um, and, and, and so it kept getting a little deeper and, you know, Carol said, Hey Mark, I think there's like, is this feel like it's sinking to you? And I said, a little bit, you know, I said, but it's okay. You know, and so, <laughs> so we, we lived with it for a little few weeks. He so I said, Mark, I think this is sinking a little bit more. Is that bothering you? And I said, yeah, I think it's all right, Carol, just don't worry about it. And, you know, everybody needs a hole in your house, you know, so. And uh, so it was, it was kind of like getting worse. And so I, I, the, you know, liaison for us in the builder, I said, hey, uh, you might want to stop by and look at something. And so sure enough, he, he, he swings by and looks in. And I, you know, I said, first of all, that beam up there, it's like bowing and, you know, up in the loft area. And he said, and then there's this like little, um, it's like sinking here right by the refrigerator. And on the other side is my um, grand piano, and it's a lot of weight, and so I'm not sure this is normal, but I don't typically think that most homes have a sinking hole in the middle of their kitchen area. So uh, he looked at it, and, and I could tell he was trying to make me feel like, yeah, everybody has one of these sinking holes in their <laughs> kitchen. And so uh, he goes downstairs and looks around, and he pulls out some floor plans and looks around, and, and he said, I'll be back in, uh, tomorrow. So he comes back with a few people with him, and uh, one's an engineer, and, uh, and, and so they, they come back and they look around and finally they come back up the stairs and in the most kind and normal and subtle way, he says, um, we got a little bit of an issue. Somehow we missed the main support beam in the middle of the house. And he said, and like, yeah, you know, every house has a missing support beam in the middle of their house, you know, so I, I could tell that don't be afraid, you know, don't be afraid if you fall through, well, you know, you won't fall far. And um, so I, I decided, you know, uh, that this is a big issue, and 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 so he said, we're gonna we're gonna fix this, and and we're really sorry, we don't know how we missed this and all the inspections, you know, but you're missing a beam, you know. So so they a couple of days later they bring in a beam and they take it down the stairs, and, and they said we're gonna do this over a period of time. Every few days we're gonna come back here and jack this up just a little bit. We don't want to do it all in one day. And I said, well, that sounds smart to me, and and so they. Every couple of days, they'd come and jack this beam up. And as they would begin to jack this beam up, then a lot of other things begin to happen. So the wall that where, you know, everything was, it began to really bow. And I mean, like, really bow. And it was obvious. And, um, and, and then all the hardwood floors throughout the entire walk in the entrance of our house, the dining room, and, and where the grand piano was, and the kitchen, and, and of course goes back into the bathroom by the garage. It's a lot of hardwood. And, 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 and so it, uh, it begins to like pull apart and, and warp. And, and so uh, now we got another problem. Uh, when they started to jack the house up. And every few days, you know, they would jack it up a little bit more. And they'd take an engineer and go up into the attic and look what was going on with the rafters. It's, I'm kind of getting a little nervous, you know, to be honest with you. I'm thinking, you know, this doesn't seem normal. You know, that walls are, you know, moving and, and floors are separating. And, and so uh, he said, yeah, we're going to have to, you know, um, well, first of all, I said, what's, what's going to happen to these floors? And I thought, you know, certainly not going to just let that be. And he said, no, we're going to have to replace all the hardwood floors that were brand new. And so they had to rip out all the hardwood floors. And of course, they didn't have those kind of floors now. So we had to pick out new hardwood floors. And, and one of the other things they did when they built the home and, um, is they poured the concrete when it was too cold and had all kinds of like designs in the concrete, and, and that bothered me. I'm pretty ADD, and I've got compulsive disorder issues, and and so, I, and I'm like, you know, hey, I spent good money in this house, and I don't want all these designs. Nobody else in this neighborhood has designs in their concrete. I don't want designs in my concrete. I don't want the people to walk down the block as they're walking their dogs and say, yeah, that's the house with all the funny designs in their driveway. So, so then they had to jack up our entire brand new concrete driveway and the sidewalks 
and to the house and in front of her house. And well, they weren't going to do the dr sidewalks at first, but then I said, no, because now the sidewalks with all their designs won't match our driveway. You know, so that all needs to be done. So, I, I mean, there was just a lot of issues. And because they missed a major support beam in the house, it cost them a lot of money. And as a result of not only fixing the problems, they wanted me to sign this piece of paper that said they fixed it. And I'm like, I ain't signing that right now, you know. And uh, I may wake up and walk out here one morning, the whole right side of the house is falling, falling down or something. And so I, I didn't sign anything right away. And, and so they, they were afraid then that they were going to have this big lawsuit. And so they, they started to say, hey, we'd like to pour, make your driveway a lot bigger and, and pour you a nice little patio. And, and I was getting all kinds of freebies all because of this one bar that wasn't put in in the beginning and uh, missed inspections and missed all this and and so we're getting uh, now I've been there 10 years I think everything is cool now but uh, I mean it cost them a bunch of money you know, to jack up driveways and sidewalks and support beams and hardwood floors and, and all this kind of stuff and and so I want to talk to you a little bit about the power and the importance of the foundation in your life, in your family, and in this church. And we don't want to just build a church and get people to come. That's not our purpose. We want to build a church that's healthy, that's strong, that has a great foundation that we can grow and help people. And you want to build a life and a walk with God, and a relationship with God, and a family, and your children on a strong foundation. If the foundation in your walk with God is not built upon the rock with a capital R, which is Jesus Christ, eventually your life is going to crumble. You got that? I'm telling you, there is power in the foundation and what you build upon. Rest assured, Know this. Look at me right now because you need to hear this. The winds will blow. The storms will come. It doesn't matter if you say yes to Jesus today and think that your life is going to be all wonderful and blessed and you're going to get a raise tomorrow if you say yes to Jesus and you're going to lose 20 pounds tomorrow if you say yes to Jesus and you're going to get a good doctor's report. Let me tell you, you say yes to Jesus and all life still just happens. But there is a foundation when you say yes to Jesus and build your life upon it that you can stand, you can withstand the winds and the punches in the face, so to speak. The times when all hell breaks loose in your life. You better pray to God that you have built a strong foundation. Are you getting this this morning? Paul was speaking to the church plant at Corinth and, and was trying to emphasize the importance of a strong foundation in that church. He was saying, I, I'm completely frustrated by your unspiritual dealings with each other and with God. You're acting like infants, he's, infants, he's saying, in relationship to Christ. As long as you grab for what makes you feel good and makes you look important, as long as you have a position, as long as you have a ministry, as long long as you've got, you know, uh, it, it's just, you know, it's all fluffy in your, in your life. You, you, he said, you're really, you're much, not much different than a babe. He said, because you're not building it on the right foundation. It's not the one who plants or the one who waters who is at the center of your life and this church, but God who makes things grow. It's God who gives the increase. Planning and watering are menial servant jobs at minimum wages. Uh, what you're serving and getting involved, this is just our, our just the plat, you know, the, the foundation, I guess, of what we're doing to please the Lord. What makes them worth doing is the God we are serving. It becomes a worship to us. It becomes what we are doing to please him and our, our, our ability to say, God, I love you. I'm serving in this area because I love you, God. I'm ministering in this area because it's my worship. It's my way of saying thank you for all that you have done. You happen to be God's field 
in which he is working. Every one of you are a field that God is working in. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost, every one of you. And so Paul was saying, using the gift God gave me as a good architect, I designed blueprints. Apollos is, is gonna come and put up the walls and let each carpenter who comes on take the job to take care of building the foundation. So infinite, we're laying a foundation to make an impact on central Ohio and beyond. I believe that God has his hand upon this church, and this is a global church. We are a part of a much bigger thing than what's going on just in New Albany. I believe God has strategically planted us at 175 East Main Street in New Albany for a reason. I believe that I, I just believe that God knew how New Albany was just going to build and, and explode with businesses and, and all that's going on in New Albany. And he is strategically, we didn't realize it, we were, just, we were just watering, we were just laying some of the foundation, but God has strategically moved us right in to New Albany for such a time as this. So there's only one foundation, and, and that is Jesus Christ. We build on Jesus Christ in our lives. Paul said, take particular care in picking out your building materials. Church, let me encourage you, take particular care on what you are building your life with. Eventually, everybody say eventually, eventually. there's going to be an inspection. You can count on it. There's going to come, I have a saying that I say often, and that is time will promote or expose you. You can fake a lot of people out, but if your foundation is not strong, eventually your life will be exposed. I, there was a story that I uh, read years ago, and I've shared it before here, but there was, a, there was a gentleman who was trying to get involved in his construction business, and a wealthy man was trying to help him. And so the wealthy man goes to the young uh, construction builder and, and said, hey, I want you to build me a house, and I'm going to give you the money, give you the plans. And, and he said, so I want you to build this house. And so the young construction worker is all excited. He's going to build this gentleman a house. And, and so he, he gets the floor plans, and he begins to pour the foundation. And so the guy tells him it's going to be so much money to pour the foundation. And so um, he thinks to himself, hey, I can probably save Save a few bucks if I just water down the concrete just a little bit and pocket maybe a couple extra thousand bucks. And so, sure enough, he waters down the concrete and saves a couple thousand bucks and pockets a profit for himself. And, and so then they begin to frame the house, and, and so he went and purchased lumber, but there was a second-grade lumber that, you know, the two-by-fours were a little crooked, and, and, but, you know, it was going to be behind drywall, and no one was going to see it. So he thought, well, hey, I can pocket another couple thousand bucks if I get this other, you know, um, if I get this other uh, uh, lumber and use it. And so sure enough, he is, you know, he gets the this lumber that's kind of second grade and 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 puts the drywall on it. Sure enough, you don't see it, you don't notice it. Uh, it's it's uh, it's all behind drywall. So, and he began to do this in all the different areas with electricity and plumbing and and begin to shave off some things all along till eventually the home is all constructed all the way to the roof and inside. And and here and there he kind of chintzied and cheated on some things, but you couldn't tell it because most of it was behind something. And so the home, when it was finished, it all looked wonderful. It smelled wonderful, looked all brand new, and looked fine. It looked really solid. And so he brings the owner and the guy who paid for it and said, hey, your home is all done. And, and the, the owner comes, the wealthy man comes, and he looks at the home, and, and he looks at everything. And sure enough, I mean, it all looks good to him because everything, again, is underneath something or hidden behind something. And, and so the, the owner was just trying to be a blessing to this guy, and he said, listen, God's been good to me, and I want to bless you. And he said, so I'm giving you the keys, and this is your house. <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, the guy obviously never realized that he was going to live 
in a home that had all kinds of issues behind the scenes. Can I tell you that you need to be careful of what materials you are using to build your life upon. You need to be a person of integrity with your own walk with God, with your own life, and make right choices and use right materials. If you use cheap or inferior materials, eventually you will be found out. What you do in secret and the things you put behind the walls of your life and your family eventually will be exposed. So it's important that you don't use inferior materials. The inspection will be thorough and rigorous, and you won't get by with a thing. One day you're going to stand before Jesus Christ, and you will have to make an account for all the decisions that you are making each and every day of your life. If your work passes inspection, fine. If it doesn't, your part of the building will be torn out and you'll have to start all over. I suspect there are people listening online and sitting in this room right now that have had to tear down some things in your past. There's been areas that you kind of built upon a shifty foundation. Something that you realize, I didn't do that right, and now it's coming to pass. And, and now I'm being exposed to some of these errors and choices and habits and decisions in my life. And so uh, it, it will be exposed. No one will get by with vandalizing God's temple. You can try to make your little moves in, in, in private, and you may think that no one else knows uh, this is just me, but let me tell you, you will never be able to vandalize God's temple, and you are God's temple. And so you must be careful and be uh, very proactive and intentional about the foundation that you are building Everybody say, my foundation matters. My foundation matters. Yes, good thing we weren't recording that for unison. <laughs> you are God's temple, and it's important that you are intentional about your life. And as we kick off 2024, I'm encouraging you. I'm pushing you. Let me say this. As the pastor of this church, I, it's kind of my responsibility as, as a pastor to kind of coach you and coach this church that we are intentional about the decisions and, and the choices and the habits and the things that we are doing because there's going to be a day of reckoning. And young people, I can't encourage you and urge you enough. Be careful about the choices that you are making because one day it's going to be exposed. It won't be hidden forever. Let me talk to those that are in their 20-somethings in this room that you need to know the decisions you are making behind closed doors. When you think you may be fooling your parents, you may be fooling other people, but I'm telling you, you're building a foundation that is going to be exposed some point. Because let me tell you, the enemy is a master at what he does, and you are not his first rodeo. He's really good at what he does, and he's a master of exposing the weakest point in your foundation. Amen, somebody. God's temple is sacred, and you remember, you are his temple. There's things that we don't do because with our bodies and our minds and our hearts, because we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Jesus dwells in me. Jesus dwells in you. Don't fool yourself. Don't think that you can be wise merely by being relevant. Well, the other churches are doing this. The other church world, other believers say it's okay. And other churches are you know, embracing this and embracing that. And be God's fool. And that's the path to true wisdom. What God calls, or what the world calls smart, God calls stupid. 
And so you sit there and try to be relevant and this is happening over here and this is okay and this, and, and we can be a believer. We saw on Facebook that you can do this and still love Jesus. Ask yourself, is this building a strong foundation in my life? It's written in scripture, he exposes the hype of the hipsters. The master sees through the smoke and screams of everything that's going on in our lives. And off the front end of this year, I wanna challenge you, take this year and build a strong foundation in your life and in your walk with God. A weak foundation breaks down many years down the road. And what kind of a foundation do you really wanna have down the road? When you've been building for years you really want it to be exposed that it was built on something that wasn't stable, something that was kind of watered down. Where will you be standing if the Lord tarries, and I'm not even sure this is possible, but 20 years from now? I can tell you that I've lived long enough now that I've got a lot of peers, a lot of friends, some ministry workers that I've worked with over the years, and they're gone. Their marriages are messed up. Their lives are messed up. And it looked fine years ago. It looked, I mean, they, I thought we were all walking this walk of God together. I thought we were all just, you know, serving God and together. And, and, and I have to ask myself, where where were the crooked two by fours in, in, that, in that family? Or where was the, the foundation watered down? Did you try to use inferior materials? Were you trying to be relevant? And, and so I ask you today, where will you be 30 years from today if the Lord tarries? And because you gotta understand the foundation that you have is important. If you're not careful, you're gonna wind up with cracks in your foundation. If you're not careful, you'll have resentment that will begin to tear apart the foundation of everything that you've built on. If you're not careful, you're gonna be harboring bitterness that's gonna start to deteriorate when we, your foundation. When we poured our driveway, when we bought our home, the, the, the guy told us, listen, you gotta, you gotta put the sealant on your driveway because if you don't put sealing on this driveway over time, the, uh, the elements of the weather and snow and all this will begin to you know, mess up your driveway. And I'm like, it's concrete. How can I mess up concrete? You know, but again, the storms are coming. The weather is coming. The challenges are coming. The bad health reports are coming. The rejection is coming. The disappointments in life, they're coming. All that is coming. And so if you're not careful and you don't build your life on a strong foundation, then, then it's gonna crumble. And everything that you've built, the life that you built, the beautiful family that you built, the wonderful career that you've built, everything that you've built, one day begins to totally fall apart and then you're wondering how did this happen will you be in a constant state of repair over the next 30 years will you be trying to patch your life and all the holes and all the mess ups because you just didn't take the time to build the foundation let us take this year and do some investigating and do some inspections personal inward inspections and say god i want to build this life on a firm foundation sometimes we think the 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 little rules in the bible we look at them like well that's not relevant i mean we're in 2023 we're i mean uh, this was written a long time ago and god's just trying to keep us from having fun and enjoy life and, and but he's not what he's trying to do is say hey use this as your blueprint to create a strong foundation for your life Amen. will you be able to stand the Storms, the hurts, the disappointments, the betrayals, the sickness. Let me tell you, the enemy will expose your weakest point. The weather of life has a way of finding the cracks, and then it starts to deteriorate and create a problem. There's an old hymn that said, On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking 
sand. Everybody say all other ground. All other ground. Everything outside of Jesus Christ, relationships, careers, hobbies, all those things are fine. But if you build your life on those, let me tell you, it's sinking sand. But if you build your life on Jesus Christ, then all the other stuff can make it and be fun and bring peace. If you don't build your life on Jesus Christ, there will always be a fear and an anxiety and frustration because everything you're building on is sinking sand. Amen. Amen. When you show up on Sundays, what are you doing? You're building your foundation. When you pray, you are building your foundation. When we fasted like we did this week, and I want you to know you're building your foundation. Let me just say this. If you, you know, we did three days. If some of you didn't make it, don't you dare let the enemy sit there and say, ah, you didn't make it all the way, so none of it matters. No, you look in the devil's face and say, listen, I did my best this year. I'm working on my foundation. I'll try it again another time. I'll pray another time. Don't give up because you're working on your foundation. Don't let the enemy try to get in and say, hey, I think I see a crack. I, can, I think I can put some guilt in here. I think I can put some shame in here. You know, yo, enemy, I'm putting some ceiling over that area and I'm building me a foundation because I am going to be standing 20, 30, 40 years from now. Amen, somebody. When you fast, you're bringing more building materials to your foundation. When you work on strengthening your marriage, you're building your foundation. That's why we do the marriage conference. If you're married in this place today, I pray to God that you'll go with us. And, and marriage conferences aren't for struggling marriages. B marriage conferences are so you can get away and invest in the foundation of your marriage. I don't care if you've been married two years or 45 years. I think it's always important that we're strengthening our foundation. And, and, and so when, you get, when you're walking down the mall and you're with your spouse and you grab her hand, you know what you're doing? You're strengthening your foundation. You say, ah, that really doesn't matter. That's just small stuff. No, you've got to learn to work on the little things because it's the little things that build a strong foundation. Getting going on a date, you're building a foundation. Getting your children involved in VBS and bringing them to church on Sundays and getting them back there in that environment, you are building a foundation. When getting them here on Wednesday nights, building, bringing your students and, 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 and getting them involved in student ministry, let me tell you, when you do that, you're building and working and stabilizing and strengthening and putting beams in that will hold the structure of what life is going to bring them in time. Because in time, your children are going to be facing some deep challenges in life. They're going to be making deep decisions in life. And you want them to build their life on a firm, strong foundation. Well, it doesn't really matter if they're there. You know, it's just, it's a good thing. I'm glad they have it. No, it's important. These things are important to build the foundation of your family. When, when your marriage is strong, your children see it. They feel it. You give them strength, and they know that the family is not going to crumble. Sure, they're going to see an argument. Sure, they're going to hear an argument. But see, when they know, hey, we're in church every Sunday, we forgive, and we, we, know, how to, we know how to fight fast and fight fair and, and disagree, but we also know that our marriage isn't just built on a relationship and that we like each other and like to spend some time with each other, but our, our marriage is built on this altar. Our marriage is built on this word, and it's a firm foundation that our children can say, I'm not worried about my parents making it. See, when you build your house, when you build your life on a firm foundation, there's a peace that comes in your life. When you do what's right, you'll always have peace that follows the right. And so a firm foundation will strengthen your home, will strengthen your life. When you serve in this church, you're building a foundation. When you attend life groups, 
you're building a foundation. When you come in here and sing your little heart out, and there's some of you I like to sit, I've told you, some of you I like to sit by because you just sing good, and, and, and when I hear you sing, you're like, yeah, I'm loving that. Now, there's a few of you, you can't sing so hot, so you need to, you need to, you need to figure something else out. Let me tell you something. First of all, let me tell you this. The Word of God says, make a joyful noise. It may not be joyful to me, but it's joyful to him. There's a blessing and a curse of being involved in music all my life, you know. And uh, when I hear things, uh, there's things that mess up inside if it's messing up. I, it just sits in me. And, but, um, but there's pain that comes when your life crumbles. When your foundation wasn't built on something, man, there's collateral damage that happens in your life and, and when it's not built on a strong foundation. And, and so, uh, you know, you're maybe here today and, and you're listening to this and you're thinking, yeah, that's exactly where I am right now. Uh, I, everything was built kind of on a shifty foundation. Can I tell you that you can start a fresh, firm foundation and begin to build today? Start today. Don't let the enemy run you of where it could have been. At this point, I want to encourage you, take this year and get off to a healthy start and say, I'm building a foundation. Some of you, you did some, you made great progress in 2023, and your family's so different now than what it was two, three, four, five years ago. I know some of you, some of you were characters. But you've been faithful, and you've been coming, and you've been investing, and you've been building, and you've been working, and your life is slowly changing, and things are slowly transforming in your life. And, and so this year, we take a giant step and say, I'm going to build something strong that will bring peace into my life. Because let me tell you, there's such things as generational curses. You've heard of generational curses? If there's generational curses, I believe there's also generational blessings. And so you're building a foundation that's going to bring generational blessings to your family, to your children. I don't know if you've ever been around people that just seem solid. I mean, they just seem like really good people. I mean, just their family seems solid, their kids seem solid, their marriage seems solid, and they just seem to make right choices and right decisions. And it's good to hang around people that have good foundations because it's kind of contagious you kind of, they challenge you to make good choices and good decisions. So when you come in here, man, just lift up your voice. If you're a bad singer, sit over here somewhere. <laughs> just joking. Don't try to just get by. Start today asking God to help you establish a good foundation. Maybe there's been some cracks. Maybe there's been some crumbles. But today, you're going to start and bring it, you know, some of you just need to call the engineer in your life. Call the engineer, Jesus Christ, and say, hey, will you come in and will you inspect my foundation? Will you just kind of look around and see if everything looks okay? I, I need you to kind of just look and, and examine my heart. David said it this way, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit in me. I don't want to have a wrong attitude. I don't want to have a wrong spirit. God, I, I want you to help me do this right. I don't want to build my foundation and my relationship with God on just rules and and you know if Carol Carol has sit, made this comment to me several times you know, sharing it with other people as well and she said if I you know if, when if Mark would have come to me she said and said hey you know you want to get married you know uh, this is what you got to do this is what you know I want you to do this di di the dishes this way and vacuum the house this way and be this kind of person and and this is what I want Carol would have said forget you <laughs> forget you you know and. You know, and so, but we fell in love. And Carol and I, we do things for each other because we love each other. They're not rules to us. They're not disciplines to us. They're things that we have put in our marriage foundation because we genuinely care for each other. There's things that we put in our foundation that, you know, I just, you know, you wouldn't see me ever just going out to eat with some lady. You know, and just, you know, well, it's all church business. It's work business. It's a, you know, I mean, no, I, we just don't do that. There's nowhere in the Bible says I couldn't go out to eat with some lady. But 
Why would I put that question in our foundation? Why would I make that move and maybe someone else is trying to figure out what I'm doing? You know, maybe they call Carol and say, ah, what's going on here? And then all of a sudden, Carol's trying to figure out what I'm doing. You know what? Because we have a strong foundation, goofy things can happen. And Carol and I know we've built a solid foundation and little things aren't gonna shake us. Because I'm telling you, in this life, the enemy has a way of punching you so hard in the face and messing everything up. And you better hope to God that you have built a strong foundation. Can we stand this morning? I'm asking you to be faithful over the next few weeks because we're gonna really hone in and deal in on the foundation of our life and walking with God. I'm asking everyone to join Carol and I in this altar. I'm asking Carol if she'll join me on this platform. I want you to understand something. Look at me, pay attention right now. This altar, we're gonna build a bigger building one day and we'll have a bigger altar. But I wanna tell you, this altar is one of the greatest friends you can ever have in your life to build the foundation of your life. Single, student, married, widowed, divorced, wherever you find yourself, make this altar your friend in 2024 and make a commitment to yourself. I'm gonna become a friend to that altar. One day, one day, you're gonna be driving by this building. I remember when we had church in that side, in that room over there. I got tears in some of this carpet. I've got moments where God dealt with me and I was building a foundation. Nobody knows the prayer that I prayed in that moment. Nobody knows the pain I was going through and the hurt that I was going through. But I begin to say, God, would you be the engineer of my life? Would you examine my life? I've had some hurt. I've had some rejection. I've had authority in my life disappoint me and misread me and misunderstand me. I can tell you, I can speak all those kind of prayers myself. And if you live for God any length of time, you're going to have those things come into your life. And it's going to be this altar that becomes your friend. And it's what you can stand on. People will disappoint you. Leadership can disappoint you. Pastors can disappoint you. Friends can disappoint you. Even spouses can disappoint you. But let me tell you something that you must know when you walk out of here today. That Jesus Christ will never, ever fail you. And he's a firm foundation that you can build on. That you can say, oh God, I don't know why they felt this way about me. Lord, inspect me. Create in me a clean heart, oh Lord. I want to know you. I want to make it. I want heaven to be my home one day. And when the trumpet sounds, I want to make it. But if you don't build on a firm foundation, you're going to find yourself in so much pain and a life of crumbles and a life of disappointment. And I'm trying to help somebody today to encourage you. Forget about all the other things right now. Forget about all the disciplines and all that. Start with a love for Jesus in your life. And you're going to find over time that you're going to say, oh, God, don't ever second guess my heart. I, I, I'm not going there anymore because, God, I don't want you to think that's where my heart is. I'm not spending my money on that anymore, God, because I don't want you to think that that's what I'm leaning on. I'm not going to be addicted to that anymore, God, because that's not my foundation anymore. I am not saying that. I'm not walking out like that. I'm going to change some lifestyles. I'm not going to visit that place anymore. And why? Because that's not my foundation I'm building on one more day of my life. God, your word tells me what I need to stand on, and that's what I'm leaning on for the rest of my life. Would you come this morning around this altar? I'm asking everybody to come. Doing right will produce the foundation for peace in your life. Don't run from building 
a strong foundation. Don't try to fluff your foundation. Move all the way up to the front so we have room for everybody that wants to come. You'll regret trying to cheat your foundation. There will always be questions. There will always be storms. There will always be tests. But on Jesus Christ, my rock I stand. Where'd my wife go? Sorry. In the first service, I started to walk like I do. And all of a sudden, I heard, I felt this firm grip from Carol. Like, you're not going to walk anymore while you're preaching. Go stand right here because I'm not following you all around. But move on in. Come on in. We got some more space up here. Move on in. If you're married, I'm going to ask you to put your arm around your wife or grab her hand or something. If you're single, then you need to pray this prayer. But I'm going to pray over you first. And then this worship team is going to sing and, and just create an environment. For about five minutes, I just want you to say, God, I want you to in my life. I want to build my life on the things of you. So, Father, I pray right now, God, over this church. First of all, I pray, God, as a corporate family, I'm asking you, Lord, to build this church. Lord, help us to build this church on you and the things that please you and the ways that honor you. I'm helping, help us, God, to, to just build a firm foundation where this community can walk in here and feel an environment that's safe and healthy. And then I'm praying, God, for every individual in this room, Lord, over this year, our word, God, is more. And so we're asking you, Lord, help us to build more relationship with you, God. Help us, Lord, to have more of your presence in our lives, in our business, in our children, Lord, in our health, in our minds. I pray, God, today as we begin, Lord, to just move forward this year, that we'll build on a firm foundation. Let this place be a place that's healthy. Let this place be a place that's unified. Let this church be a place that honors you. God, let us serve this year. Let us have a desire, God, to make a difference. So, so when people walk through these doors, they can feel our kindness and our love and our compassion. And Lord, help us to focus on the things that move us into a stronger position with you. And Lord, help us, God, not to get disrupted or, uh, or detoured, God, on things that really don't matter, Lord. Help us not to build our life on uh, things, Lord. Lord, that are trivial, but God, to build our life on the things that, that really give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Right now, all over this building, I'm asking you, pray your own prayer now and ask God. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to inspect you. Ask God to just sweep through your heart and say, Lord, I want to build a firm foundation right off the front end of this year as this worship team begins to sing. 